Hello, welcome to today's Ajax Technologies webinar. Today's topic is SAP Asset Management, Mobility and IoT Solutions for Asset Intensive Industries. You'll notice a control panel on your screen where you have the ability to ask questions. You can ask questions throughout the presentation, but please know that we will answer them at the end of the session. If we are unable to answer your question during the session, we will follow up with you with an email and give you an answer. There will also be polls throughout the presentation, which you can answer with your control panel. And there is a handout of today's presentation in the control panel as well. Without further ado, here is Thomas P. Ventilette, CEO of Ajax Technologies, and he will um, explain the relationship Ajax has with SAP and introduce today's speaker. Hello, this is Thomas. I appreciate everybody uh, joining today. This is um, uh, our webinar series for this year. Uh, ending with this one is, I think, uh, a fantastic way to well, end this year and begin next year. I think everybody understands that SAP runs in just about every facility where uh, uh, where we operate. Uh, bringing the power of SAP out into the field, uh, into those operating environments with, uh, with end users, having real-time access to information, uh, uh, real-time updates. And as we head into that IoT world and the launch of uh, the large IoT platform uh, early next year, uh, with hundreds of different types of sensors, having the ability for that to feed live into uh, Leonardo, the impact to organizations will be significant. John uh, Wilson is, uh, is responsible for the go-to-market strategy for IoT and digital supply chain at SAP in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, a, a fantastic guy with an incredible background and knowledge of this. And so uh, I feel honored that we've got John to talk to you about how this all comes together and uh, the impact it'll have for your, for customers. So thanks for joining. John, uh, go for it. Thanks very much, Tom. And uh, it's a real pleasure to uh, to be able to join you and, and, and the team and, and everyone who's joined this morning. Uh, just by, by way of introduction uh, for, for myself, I mean, I've, I've spent uh, a number of years working in asset intensive industries, you know, from u utilities to tra transportation to mining and, and oil and gas. It's, uh, it's you know, mobility and, and IoT is a, a topic that's always been very close to my heart. And, and I'm really excited, you know, to see the expansion and the adoption of the technologies, you know, that, you know, going from kind of what were sort of niche solutions a, a few years ago, really to kind of mainstream adoption now. And it, it's really exciting what is what is possible now. And, and with some of the platforms that we have from from uh, providers like, like Ajax and working together with, with software solutions like SAP, there really is just a, a tremendous potential to change the way that we we approach asset management. So, uh, so I'm really excited uh, to talk today, and and I want to start by by talking about some of the uh, you know the the things that we hear from uh, from our customers. And I spend a lot of time talking to to different customers across all those different industries, and and we see like common problems that exist across you know across all of these customers you know and the first one really is around around siloed processes so typically you know uh, in in the customers i talk to they have multiple different teams those teams are all working on on different enterprise systems so you know you have one team that's working in the maintenance execution system which might be an, an sap erp system uh, you've got other teams that are responsible for the operational systems and the, or the network management systems or the SCADA systems, so all of those operational systems. You've got other teams that are working in the GIS space and, and working with the GIS system. And then, you know, yet more teams working in the engineering space and the design space. And, you know, each of those areas, they've got their own processes, they've got their own technology. Uh, but there's information that needs to be shared, and, and you know, and that's often a real, a real challenge. You know, keeping that information shared, and then keeping it synchronized. So you know, having one one system that is is controlling that data, but then making it available to all the others. And you know that you know those silos, you know, they create 
visibility problems. You know, it's very difficult to see a complete picture of the end-to-end -end process if I, if I can't see across all of these different systems. And you know, and you know, traditional work practices that that you know that we see today, you know, often involve you know large numbers of paper forms, you know, different drawings, maps, documentation. And this all makes it really hard for, for the guys who are working out in the field, you know, to find and access the information that they need in order to complete their work, you know, efficiently and, and effectively. So, you know, it's not only that access to information, but, you know, often they have to fill out, you know, uh, paper in the field, you know, often writing the same thing down two or three times, you know, because they have to satisfy these different processes. And, you know, and that information, you know, may, may never find its way back into an enterprise system, or, or if it does, you know, it, it may be after some delay, you know, that, um, you know, that information often is, you know, filled out on a piece of paper, it's given to, to a, an administrator who will, who will enter that back into the system. And of course, that brings with it the risk that, you know, that it's entered incorrectly, transcribed, you know, misunderstood, um, you know, and that, that, that risk then, you know, compounds the, the lack of visibility by the fact that you can now have errors within that data. And then, you know, the third area that, you know, that we see a lot of focus and, and we hear a lot about is, is how, how do we avoid, you know, unplanned downtime, you know, how do we avoid incidents that are occurring? Um, and, you know, every organization I speak to is, is under pressure from, from a budget perspective, right? They're all looking to, to reduce costs. And so they're trying to understand, hey, how do we how do we best use the resources that we have, you know, be that people or, or tools or, or money, to to maximise the performance, to to manage the risk, you know, while at the same time keeping our costs under control, and you know, and for for large scale operations, you know, this is this is really about how do I keep the process moving, you know, how do I identify the bottlenecks and ensure that those are understood and that I manage the risks around those. So, you know, we're seeing this, this move towards, you know, more sophisticated kind of thinking and more sophisticated maintenance strategies and using technology to, uh, to help drive those strategies and uh, reduce the risks associated with uh, unplanned outages. So, you know, really, uh, you know, a range of, a range of different, uh, different things that we're hearing here. And you know we're also seeing some some broader trends you know across the whole the whole enterprise management space. Uh, there is a uh, you know the rise of different standards. You know so obviously the the ISO fifty five thousand series that that gets you know talked about a lot. But there's a huge number of different standards, and and it's not just standards that organisations are voluntarily adopting, but also you know that regulatory bodies and government agencies are are putting in place you know. And, and challenging organizations to uh, to be able to adopt you know higher standards as well so you know when we look at, at things like safety you know both of, of workers and and broader public safety you know we're, we're seeing you know additional layers of of, uh, of legislation safety and and uh, all of these sorts of uh, you know holistic asset management processes that need to be put in place to, to manage against all of these standards. You know, of course, we, we always have the challenge of, of managing, you know, cost, risk, and performance, you know, so how do, I, how do I keep those budgets under control, manage my risks, and deliver the performance that I need? Um, but, you know, we're seeing that this isn't just from a maintenance execution perspective, but actually from a much more holistic, you know, all the way from, you know, identification and planning of what assets do I need through their purchase and, and commissioning, obviously their operation, but all the way through to disposal. So we're seeing our customers looking at that broader life cycle and saying, it's not just about optimizing the, you know, the, the operation or the execution phase, but actually it's about optimizing that complete end-to-end -end life cycle. So, you know, it, it requires, you know, a different, a different view, a, a different way of, of looking at assets. Um, of course, you know we're we're seeing a shift from from capital expenditure to to operating expenditure. Uh, you know, and when we talk about some of the technology trends, of course, you know the cloud-based approach is 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 driving that as well. Um, but this is also you know a shift in the way that we think about asset lifecycle costing. 
Um, and, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, around, around government and, and regulatory authorities, you know, the, the need to meet stakeholder expectations is, is, is increasing as well. You know, typically I'm, I'm seeing, you know, in the customers that I talk to, the relationships they have, the, the organizational arrangements, the joint ventures are getting increasingly complex. There's more and more stakeholders being involved in those processes and managing to all of those expectations is, is a real challenge. You know, but you know, uh, on on the other side, you know, we're seeing the need to to empower our practitioners, the the guys and girls in the field. We want to make sure that they have the tools, they have the technology that they need to be able to do their jobs well. Uh, we want to see more collaboration between uh, all the various players, different stakeholders. Uh, so we want them to all work together. Um, to be able to share information. So whether you're a manufacturer of a piece of equipment, an operator of that equipment, someone who's responsible for servicing it, you want to be able to share that information, have a common view of, of that asset. And that's something that, uh, that increasingly we're, we're seeing, you know, that, that sharing of information uh, coming through as well. And then, you know, lastly, you know, the, the shift towards new business models. And we're seeing this particularly from the manufacturers of assets where they're going from just you know, manufacturing and selling an asset to taking full responsibility for that asset. So, in fact, you don't buy it anymore. You you effectively take the asset for free and you just pay for what you're using and then it becomes the manufacturer's responsibility to manage and service and maintain that asset. So a real, a real shift from a, you know, a capital intensive, you know, upfront purchase to an ongoing pay as you, pay as you use type model. So, and all of these models are, are really shifting, you know, the, the needs around what information we need, when we need it, who needs it, and is driving, you know, many of these other trends. Of course, on the, on the technology side, we've got a whole range of, of technologies that are, that are also impacting the way that we approach asset management. You know, Tom mentioned, you know, the, the Internet of Things, you know, we're seeing just this tremendous scale now in, in the ability to, to put sensors and to get information from our assets. So whether those sensors are already built in by the manufacturers or whether we add them to, to assets uh, after they're installed, um, the ability to do this and do this at scale is dramatically different to, to what it was even just a few years ago. And of course, with, with all of those things and all of that, those sensors uh, gathering information, we now have a whole lot more data that we need to manage. And so we need to bring that data in, we need to be able to get insight from it, but we need to be able to understand it in context. You know, it's not enough just to have the data by itself, we need to be able to understand it in relation of those other systems. So those enterprise systems, those GIS systems, those engineering systems. So we need to be able to bring that data together and and do the analytics on it yeah you know? and you know with with the scale and the, and the pace at which that data is coming you know analytics now is is more than just visualization and and reporting it's about using the power of technology so technologies like machine learning and advanced statistical analyses that actually let us understand the data and think of, you know, actually directs us into some of the questions that we might ask, things that we maybe haven't, haven't thought of, trends that we haven't seen, that actually by, you know, analysis of, of a large volume of data that machines can, can then, you know, help us understand that data much better. And we're seeing, you know, new areas like data intelligence, you know, this is, this is an area that's emerging around taking the data that you have and being able to, to turn that into a, a commercial proposition. So being able to sell that or commercialize that data and make it available for others to access. And obviously there's a, a different set of tools and technologies you need there to be able to control access and to, to control the, the commercial aspects of that. Um, but increasingly data is power and, uh, and with that power comes an opportunity to, uh, to make a commercial outcome here as well. And then, you know, the enterprise mobility, we'll spend a little bit of, a little bit more time talking about this one. It's obviously a major technology enabler. And, you know, we're reaching the point, you know, where, where adoption is, is, is almost nearly universal. You know, almost everyone now has access to a mobile device. 
Uh, and you know the power that we have in our hands is, is rapidly expanding, and as it, as is the the ability to um, to use that now to do so much more than we could just a few years ago. So I think we're really just beginning to scratch the surface of of the possibilities that these devices are opening opening up for us. And then lastly, you know, cloud computing. So using the the power of the cloud to to be able to expand, to be able to collaborate, and to be able to do everything much more efficiently. So from SAP's perspective, you know, our, our approach here is really, really twofold. Um, on the, on the left-hand side, you know, we have what we call our, our digital core. These, these are our, our system of record applications. So this is things like our traditional ERP or, or the next generation that we call S4HANA. And you know these are really where we keep our, our official records. What assets do we have? You know what are they? Where are they? How are we managing them? What you know what maintenance are we performing? Um, so all of the planning, scheduling, uh, health and safety, all of those applications sit on on that left hand side. And this is what SAP has been doing successfully for for many decades now. And we have very proven, very stable, very uh, robust enterprise systems in that space. But of course, what we're seeing now is that this isn't enough, that we need to also, whilst we have those core systems, we also need to be able to innovate. And that is about taking advantage of those technologies. So technologies like the Internet of Things, like machine learning, like big data. And in order to do that, we need a different system. You know, we can't move at the pace that we need to move inside our core systems. And so for SAP, we have created SAP Leonardo. This is, this is our system of innovation. So this is where we can deliver, uh, you know, those new technologies, new scenarios uh, like mobility, like predictive maintenance, where we can deliver those very quickly and we build them on top of that core. So they extend the core systems, they integrate with those core systems, but they give us the ability to, to innovate much more rapidly. So innovation in, in days and weeks, not in, in months or years. So, you know, and really, I mean, this, this aligns with kind of Gartner's view of, uh, of IT, where you have kind of mode one, which is our, our core on the left-hand side, which is stable, rock solid, enterprise grade, you know, just works. And then you have mode two, which is where you're really, you're trying new things, you are, you know, tr using new technologies, adopting new tools and new applications. And you can try things out very rapidly, uh, you know, innovate on that side. And so, uh, so we are aligning with that and, and providing the tools to support both of those modes in parallel. Uh, and that really is, is SAP's strategy moving forward. So, you know, drilling a little bit then into, into the solutions around, around mobile asset management, uh, this is a space that SAP has, has been working in for, Again, for, for many decades, uh, our, our showcase app here is SAP Work Manager, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But really, you know, the, the, the goal here of, of mobilizing asset management is, is, is about empowering your workforce. It's about giving them the tools and the information that they need so that they can find the right asset, do the right inspection or the right repair on it, have the right parts in, in their hands and capture all of that information once and bring it straight back into that, that system of record. You know, and this isn't just about taking existing processes and, and putting them on a, on a tablet. This is actually about streamlining that whole process, getting rid of the, the processes that aren't adding value and being able to, to just capture what is needed at the point of, of performance. So, you know, and there, you know, there are some real challenges in, in this space, you know, that when you have uh, people working out in the field, you know, they don't always have connectivity. And, you know, whilst, uh, you know, we, we like to think that the connectivity is near universal these days, there are many challenging environments where, uh, where this isn't possible. Uh, we have customers who work underground, you know, customers who are working offshore, customers who are working in extremely remote areas, 
and, and connectivity just isn't available in all of those places. So you need a solution that, whilst it can work online, is, is also able to work offline and synchronize you know, once you're able to, able to get back into an area that does have connectivity. And really that, is, that has been the, the big challenge for mobility and that's, I think, where SAP has really focused their efforts on that, you know, that offline capability and that synchronization. Uh, you know the, the benefits obviously around mobility you know in terms of in terms of the time saving for, for your field workers the ability to, to get better and more accurate data around around your assets obviously you're looking to, to reduce the you know overtime to reduce the cost that's involved here and, and ultimately reduce that you know that unplanned downtime so if we look a, a little bit at too far. Look a little bit at SAP Work Manager. Um, so this is this is a, a fully featured mobile application. You can you can process uh, notifications for new work. You can process work orders. Uh, you know, capturing time, capturing parts, updating status. Uh, you can maintain and, and create uh, asset master data as as well. Uh, it's integrated with GIS. It's integrated with 3D uh, modeling, 2D modeling. Uh, full attachment support, so I can capture images, I can download drawings and documents, uh, I can do inspections, so capturing condition. So really all of the capabilities that, that you are looking for from, uh, from you know, a field worker perspective, we have made available uh, in this application. And this application is, is the result of you know, uh, almost two decades uh, worth of, of, of work in, in this space. Um, it's uh, available on a, on, a, on a variety of platforms, but, you know, we see a lot of our customers choosing, um, you know, the Windows platform, choosing a tablet that, you know, that is both, uh, you know, nice in terms of ergonomics, you know, it needs to be small enough and light enough that, that, that they can take it with them easily, but also tough enough that it can survive in the in you know the, the challenging environments that they sometimes find themselves. So you know, in terms of you know why why people choose uh, choose SAP solutions in this space, um, I mentioned already you know that that need for for inter enterprise grade connectivity you know in terms of being able to support online, offline, or or occasionally connected. So doesn't matter what the network's doing, you still need to be able to, to, to work with the solution. Uh, we, we, we run natively um, on top of Windows, Android, and iOS. Uh, we have a, a, a platform that actually allows you to develop and, and change the application without having to code natively on all of those platforms. So, you know, being able to, to design the application and, and deploy on multiple platforms is, is a, you know, a feature here. Um, and but that third point, you know, that usability in, in challenging environments, and I think this is really where the relationship between SAP and AJAX comes comes to to the front. That you know that where you have hardware devices that support those challenging environments that can be paired with software that is able to uh, to work in those environments as well, uh, really gives you a. a, a a combination then that is, is perfect for, for almost any customer. Um, of course, we, we support you know all the native features of devices as well. Um, so we're able to integrate you know things like the camera on the device or you know devices that have barcode scanners. Uh, we're able to integrate with, with other applications as well. So if you're running multiple applications on the devices, we can link with those. And of course, like like all uh, like all SAP solutions, you know, it's reliable, it's very configurable, and of course it scales to, a, you know, to an enterprise level. So we have customers that are running the solution with hundreds and thousands of, uh, of field workers uh, working, working through it. So just going to switch gear a little bit away from, from mobility then and, and then talk a little bit about, I guess, the, the Internet of Things and, and how, you know, the, the capabilities in that space are now changing some of the ways that we approach maintenance as well. And, and I think, you know, uh, there is no doubt that, you know, we are seeing an, an explosion in, you know, the, the number of different sensors and, and the, the ease at which those sensors can be integrated back into our data platforms. 
and I think you know this is really changing the way many people have, are, are thinking about you know the way they plan, the way they they execute uh, on on their asset management strategy, because all of a sudden, from having to kind of approximate or, or guess at, at at what the condition of an asset is, or you know, or, or even having to send people out to to inspect and, and assess the condition of an asset. Now, it is increasingly possible now to to have that information being fed in in real time. So I can now understand the condition. And, you know, I can now start putting together some information around asset health that helps me to understand what does a what does a healthy asset look like versus a not so healthy asset. And, and if I'm looking across a, a broad fleet, I can then start to rank my assets and start to make decisions around where I should focus my attention. So rather than maybe doing a, a, a preventative maintenance on every asset every six months or every so many hundred run hours, I can now start looking at the assets that are, that are not performing well and do their, their preventative maintenance earlier. Whereas the assets that are performing well, maybe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift their, their maintenance out a little bit. So moving from these kind of generic asset management strategies to much more tailored and much more individualized strategies that, that really target specific assets in their specific environment and their specific condition. And, you know, and we can use that information as well, you know, to, to alert people hey, when, when a, you know, a, a, a potentially hazardous situation is, a, is occurring, you know, uh, so if there's a failure that is, that is coming, um, we can use that that real time information to to get those alerts and to take decisions around you know hey do I shut down that piece of equipment do I send someone straight away you know what how do I react to that so real time information helps us to to have a much more prompt response and to be able to to you know intervene before there's a, a real problem uh, in in my system. And of course, th this information isn't just for internal purposes, but potentially can be shared with other people as well. So, um, you know, manufacturers, for example, often can really be of great assistance here in understanding, you know, the, the information, the health and everything like that. And in fact, as I mentioned before, many of them are now building this into the services that they offer. So really, you know, the, 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 the power here uh, and the promise of IoT is, is around you know, being able to, to hit that trifecta of cost, risk and performance. So, you know, to lower the cost of, of, of maintenance by, you know, being able to only do the maintenance, you know, that is needed, you know, when it's needed, uh, to improve the performance, you know, so that I can, I can identify failures and errors before they occur. And of course, to manage my risk, you know, so here, you know, with predictive approaches, being able to understand that risk and, uh, and manage it before it occurs. So you know, from from SAP's view, you know, we we see this as a as a kind of a a progression, right? From from reactive kind of break fix type maintenance to preventative, which is where we see many of our customers are today. I'm doing regular inspections. I'm doing regular routine maintenance, you know, periodic but or, or counter based, and seeing that move up to the right hand side to more condition based. So understanding real time condition and and acting on that. And then the next step beyond that really is, is predictive. So I, I take that condition, I look at that compared with the history and also uh, with all the maintenance that I've done and then I make some, some decisions around what I think is going to happen in the future and how quickly I may have an issue. So, you know, so we're really trying to encourage our customers to, to shift the mix from, you know, from a large amount of preventative, which is what we see today, to, to an increasing amount of, of condition-based and, and predictive. So really shifting from, you know, what the manufacturer maybe recommends, which is their kind of generic and, and ultimately is, is going to be conservative. And, you know, and when you have a conservative estimate around maintenance, you end up over-maintaining. You end up incurring more cost. And we're trying to shift this to a more a data science-driven approach where you're using the data to ensure that you're, you're actually putting the right amount of effort, the right amount of cost into, into the right things. 
So, you know, the, the impact of doing this, you know, we're, we're seeing absolutely significant impacts, you know, for, from those customers that are adopting these sorts of approaches. Uh, so, for example, we have a, a, a train company that we're working with in Italy, Trenitalia. Um, they're, they're seeing an 8 to 10 percent reduction in their maintenance spend. And for them, that's in the region of 100 million euros per year from shifting their maintenance strategy from preventative to more condition-based and predictive. So absolutely phenomenal savings, you know, available at, at large scale here by adopting different practices and different approaches and, you know, really being able to, to take some of the technology that's available today uh, from, from different, you know, vendors, but vendors like Ajax and bringing that into your organization, combining it with software from SAP really is able to deliver some, some tremendous benefits. So just a, a couple of key takeaways, we are on the half hour, you know, I you know, mentioned at the start, you know, we have see customers who are siloed, really we're, we're working towards an integrated solution, be it from a mobility point of view or be it from an IoT point of view, what we want to do is bring the data together from the different systems, from our, our, our enterprise systems, from our operational systems, from our GIS systems, bring that together, be able to do analytics and gain insight on that data, but of course it's not enough just to gain insight, you have to be able to translate that insight into action. So being able to, you know, to, to do your analysis, but then also drive that back into those core systems, back into those systems of record. And then of course, you know, being able to do this in an agile way, these should not be projects that take months or years. These need to be projects that we can do in, in, in days or weeks so that we can very quickly get a return, very quickly prove the value and then move on and, and expand that, that capability throughout the enterprise. So uh, the, the, the pack here is, is available to download. There's some additional links that are here that, that can provide some additional information about uh, SAP's capability. Uh, so I'd encourage you to have a look at some of those. And of course, if uh, you have any other questions, uh, feel, please feel free to reach out to me or, or to Tom and the team at Ajax and uh, would be very happy to, uh, to assist you with any other inquiry. Thank you, John. We've had a couple questions come in over the course of your presentation, and I'd like to address a few of them right now for those of you that can stay on the line. Uh, first of all, for mobility, which device platforms are most popular and why? So this is a really interesting one. I mean, device selection is obviously a really, a really, uh, a really interesting topic. Uh, I mean, here, here in Australia and New Zealand, I think it's fair to say that probably the Windows platform is is the most popular um, that I see amongst my customers. Um, I think the the reason for that is is probably twofold. Um, one that you know that it, it's a it's a platform that is is well known. Um, so the IT organization knows how to manage it. They know how to you know how to roll software out to it. You know, um, so a bit easier than some of the other platforms. Um, but two, I think it's it's also a platform that supports a whole range of of different capabilities. So as well as being able to run SAP software, uh, you can run a whole range of other other software. And so. Uh, with, I see customers who say, hey, if I'm going to put a, a, a great mobile device in, in the hands of my workers, I don't want it to just be limited to doing one thing. I, I want them to be able to, to use it for, for all, of, all of their different tasks. So, so I think for, for those reasons, um, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing Windows as still being the, the most popular platform choice. It's not to say it's the only one. I mean, I do see some of the others as well. But uh, I think that the majority are, are definitely looking at, at, at that platform as, as the place to start. Great, thank you for that insight. One more question. What is driving the adoption of IoT solutions today? Yeah, so uh, there's, there's a number of things that, that are driving this, but I think you know, the, the key one is that the cost of, uh, of actually putting you know, um, the sensors onto, onto the different assets and onto the different pieces of equipment is just has dropped dramatically and continues to drop. So, so you know, 
IoT is not new, right? The, you know, we've been doing this for, for decades, but you know, 20 years ago, we would only put sensors on the most important pieces of equipment, the most critical. Now, you know, you can you can barely buy a, a, a toy for the you know for, for your kids that doesn't have a range of sensors in it. So you know, the the cost is 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 making a, a, a huge difference in what we can we can put sensors on. But I think the other side of it, of course, is, is on the software side is, is to say the tools for managing the volumes of data are also much more accessible. So there are standard, you know, standards now in place that make it easier for, for us to connect to those devices, to, to take data from them, to store that data, analyze that data, and, and, and get you know, some insights and, 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 and make decisions from it. So really a combination, I guess, of a massive drop in, in the price of hardware combined with much, much more powerful software tools that are able to use and, and analyze that volume of data. And I think that that combination really is, is what is just leading to the, an explosion now in, in capability in the IoT space. Fantastic. Wow, we have a lot of questions. I think we only have time to address one more um, right now, but we will reach out to everyone over email um, and make sure everyone's questions do get answered on a one-to-one -one basis. The last question for this session will be, why has SAP introduced Leonardo and what problems is it intended to address? Yeah, so I think it, it really comes back to, you know, that, that diagram I had that had the kind of the, the digital core on one side and digital innovation on the other. And I think, you know, most people when they think about SAP, they think of they think of our ERP, right? And they just they think of that core system, you know, and, and to be fair, you know, we, we have been doing that for over forty years now and and you know, so it's not surprising that that's the first thing that people think of. But, but what we're seeing is that our customers are saying, whilst it's great to have a, a nice, solid, you know, core system, we want to be able to take advantage of these new technologies. We want to be able to, to, to use and, and integrate them back into that core. And really, that is that is what we're targeting with with Leonardo to be able to give a, a, a platform where our customers can adopt that technology but without having to, to impact the core. So, you know, so we use a, a, cloud, a, a cloud platform to, to do that so that people, our customers can take advantage of the Internet of Things, they can take advantage of machine learning but without having to disrupt or without having to upgrade or, you know, so without forcing them to, to change that core. And so Leonardo really is about, you know, that, that adoption of technology, that adoption of innovation uh, in conjunction with those core systems. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, I think on that, uh, John, this has been tremendously helpful and I really appreciate the time. Uh, I hope everyone's enjoyed this. Uh, as Rebecca pointed out, we'll get uh, all the other questions uh, sorted and uh, out to everybody. And uh, everyone uh, have a great remainder of the year, and uh, we'll be talking to you uh, early next year. Thanks so much. Uh, have a great day. Fantastic. Thanks, everyone.